All right, hey guys. So I'm gonna show you a quick PowerPoint I put together um, that's gonna explain the do's and don'ts of direct observational drawing, if my screen would work. There we go. Okay, so uh, these will be graded and you will be required to do this once a week to keep practicing your drawing and observational skills. Um, if we were in the classroom, you would be doing this once a week, actually more than once a week. If some of you had me last year, sometimes we did these two times a week. So we're gonna keep doing this um, no matter what. These will be found in a separate folder under materials in Schoology, and it'll be labeled direct observational drawings. And you will turn in a photo of your drawing to the corresponding date or week and we'll go to Schoology after we go through this PowerPoint real quick. So um, you need to know how to do this correctly. All right. So you're going to find items from around your house and you need to set them up. So here's how you're going to do this. OK, uh, see how in my photo I took I have different sized objects. I have something tall, some some things that are small, some things that are medium. So you don't want it to be boring and have things that are all the same size. So try your best with that. And also see how they're placed close together. That's also really, really important. They're kind of like living in the same little area. So that's something you want to do. And then also, I kind of, when I placed them, I thought about a foreground. Those are objects that are closer to me. So see the little skull that's sitting on the bowl? Um, it's, that's in the foreground. It's the closest to me. And then I have a middle ground. I have the mug with the paintbrushes. That's, they're in the middle. See how they're set back a little bit? And then the background is the drawing doll. And I have one of my masks that I wear when I have to go out and about in the building. And those are kind of in the background. So see how I kind of have different levels of depth. They're not all just in a row um, straight. So think about that too. When you do these direct observational drawings, I'm requiring you to have at least four objects in your drawings. Here I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, okay? but you, ha you have to have at least four objects. My objects, um, all right. So that's what you want it to look like. And when you do this, you know, find a quiet space, um, set aside some time to do this every week. These are not things that need to take you five minutes. You know, if you had me last year, we would be drawing these sometimes for about 15 minutes. Um, don't just rush and get it done because these are graded. Um, so you want them to look as best as possible. And the more you do this, the better you're going to get at it. You're practicing looking at something and drawing it and, um, and observing it. Um, all right. Don't. So here's a picture of what not to do. Don't place them far apart. Okay. Uh, that's, it's just randomly put there. It doesn't really look like you paid attention to how you set them up. Um, they're just kind of randomly set on the table. So don't do that. And also don't try really hard not to have objects that are the same size. I've already kind of gone over. You want them to be different sizes. Um, so that's important. So definitely take care with how you place your objects, thinking about what you choose. And then if, let's say you start drawing and maybe something happens in your house and you need to go do something, um, I would, probably before I start drawing, I would take a picture of it just in case you have to get up and go do something or uh, somebody comes in your room or a dog or something and knocks it over and then you're like, oh my gosh, now i got to start all over again. So to... Um, not run into that problem. I would set up your still life, take a photo of it, kind of like I have here, so that you have that as backup. Okay, I would definitely rather you um, draw from the objects set in front of you in real life. That's how we would do it in my classroom. Um, but just make sure you have a backup photo if something goes wrong. Also, lastly, make sure you have good lighting. 
I kind of showed you a picture here of I had a lamp shining on it. Um, if you have a lamp or if you set your objects up by the window, and so then there's natural light shining on them. Um, so kind of think about lighting. You don't obviously want to be in a dark room without any light because then it will be hard to see details of your objects. Um, and then as we get further on in the semester, I'll definitely be requiring more um, shading and value to be happening on your objects instead of just like right now, it's just going to be like contour line, like outline. Um, but definitely when I start requiring that you need to start shading and adding value, you're going to really want to start thinking about the lighting and um, how you can see the shadows and the values. <laughs> Lastly, here's my sketch of my picture. It's kind of light from when I took the photo. Um, so I did add a little bit of value in shading just because that's just my nature when I sketch. That's just how I, I have to add it for me. Um, go ahead and try it, even if you don't know anything about shading or value, but go ahead and try it if you want. Or it can just be a strict outline of your objects right now, okay? Um, see that yellow arrow down there? Try to get into the habit of signing and dating your work. You can see my initials are actually my first name, oddly enough, J-E-N are my initials, and my name is Jenny. Um, so sign it, and then make sure you write the date. Um, it's a really, really good practice to get into if you haven't already, and I did that today on August 13th. And then the blue arrow, see how I've added a line behind my objects? I would go ahead and add something like that because then it makes it look like they're sitting on a table or they have you know, a place where they are. They're not just kind of floating on your page. So then, I think that's my last slide. So hopefully all that made sense. I'm gonna try and finish this up really quick again. And so here, let me go to Schoology and show you where this folder is. I just am clicking on a class. It's gonna be materials. And I believe it's gonna, they're gonna be blue, a blue folder. So in this folder, and then I have a little bit of directions. In this folder, this is gonna be where all of these are gonna go. So for every week, so for next week, You'll have one due by next Friday. They're always due by the Friday. And so, so for next week, maybe you draw it on Monday. I don't know. And then you're done. And then you come and you, you click on the correct week. And then you'll take your photo, submit your picture, and then you're done. So hopefully that all makes sense. All right. Uh, uh...